I need a strong-willed, focused individual that is able to come with me on these shoots and help me set up said shoots, bring in the equipment, and somebody that has a deeper understanding of the cinematography and how to get the best juice out of a camera. See, here's what I'm very good at. I am very good at orchestrating and having um, a very high level understanding of how I want something to, to look, mm -hmm. how I want the intro to look, how I want the opening scene to look, the blah, 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 X, yep. Y, and Z to look. I need an integrator. I consider myself a visionary. I'm a yep. very good visionary, yep. but I need somebody to help me execute on said visions, yep. right? That's how all of this is gonna be able to turn out 10 times better than what we just looked at, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at right now. I need yeah, an so integrator. Like a, I, like a DP, you know, like a, I need a I need a DP. Yeah, and, and I need editor. an assistant. Yeah, I need an, uh, an assistant editor. I need an everything. All right. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing, Chris? Doing well. Thanks for having me on here, Keon. Absolutely. For those of you watching, you are probably responding to an advertisement where you could join our incredible team. We're excited to share the vision with you, our mission, the type of work that we do. We kind of call it, you know, TED Talk meets Netflix style documentaries for visionary, mission driven entrepreneurs, people who are here to impact the world, uh, make a huge difference. And we're looking for star talent. You know what one of our clients says, we're looking for rock stars and turning into diamonds. We're looking for people really passionate about videography and making amazing, you know, telling amazing stories of amazing on, you know, entrepreneurs and so on. And we're going to go deep into exactly what we're looking for. We're going to share some of the incredible work that we've been doing over the years. So you get a sense of who we are and uh, we'll go from there. Fair enough, Chris. Fair enough. Yeah. So let's, you know, let's go back a little bit. I, I, I literally met Chris uh, back in May. <laughs> was uh, this was actually March, Keon. March was it that March? Oh, March, March, I mean, March. Uh, months off. But uh, I, I, I saw a post. I think someone was. I think it was Perry Belcher, is a digital marketing guru, who was looking for you know video, videographers to come meet him or work with him. And uh, I think you responded at the time. And uh, so I said, "Who's this Chris guy? Let's check him out." And a few other people obviously responded. And I was, I'll just show what I when I did a little bit of. Uh, uh, research and this is what I found. I was kind of blown away by the type of work that you know that that you had you were doing, and you, you had built a a, a six figure channel in six months. You know, hundred odd thousand subscribers, one hundred fifty thousand subscribers in a very short period of time with only like eighteen twenty videos. I was blown away. I mean, I had built tons of channels back back in the earlier days, two thousand five to ten to you know, close to a million subscribers, albeit news related, a different category, nonprofit uh, news related stuff. But in this entrepreneurial space, you know, this is really quite amazing. And and you had built a $10 million business in three to four years, uh, Pet Canva, if I'm not mistaken, right? Tell us just quickly how you got into that and how you pivoted, right. back, yeah, pivoted yeah, back yeah. to filmmaking. Well, if we go back about five, maybe five, let's see, three, four, maybe about five years. I was working in three part-time jobs, going to school full time, <laughs> making a $1,300 per month income and living off a discover card. And, you know, I just, I wanted more like anybody in that state. And I was no stranger to making money online. And at the mm -hmm. time, drop shipping and e-commerce was starting to, to boom and become this, this big, thing. Yeah. And I looked into it. I was working at PetSmart on the time, PetSmart at the time. And I kind of parlayed that knowledge into starting that this, you know, I started a few different stores that weren't successful and that that led to starting Pat Canva. And over the course of about, of about three and a half years, I, I, with a partner named Julia, whom I met working stocking shelves at Kroger at the time. We, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we built that business up to to ten million dollars in three and a half years beyond 
expectations. You could ask her. It just evolved into this thing that we never imagined it would evolve into. And before you know it, we're managing 30, 40 people during peak time of the year. And, you know, throughout that time, I'm learning how to manage a business, how to be this business CEO, you know? Phenomenal. And and what I love about it is you came from broadcast journalism. You dropped out of college studying. That was your dream initially back back early on, right? Yeah, I was going, you know, I I knew I wanted to do something with video, but I, I didn't know what that avenue, you know, I, I've always been a creative person, you know, and I I think that over these several years since working these day jobs, I've just been trying to find the the best avenue for creative expression Mm -hmm. and e-commerce. I did that for a little bit. And eventually, you know, when I got to my peak with that, um, in terms of the peak, I mean, fulfillment wise, personal yeah. fulfillment, you know, I feel right. like you, every, every individual, you got to be obsessed with something in life. And it kind of got to the point to where that fizzled out. And Julia and I, we eventually sold that brand. And the question thereafter became what's next when yeah. we sold that? That's why, you know, I am a little bit older than you and, and a few more gray hairs, you could say, but you, you're only 20. Seven, I believe now, right? So twenty-seven. Still, I turned twenty-eight in a couple of weeks. Actually, still very young. <laughs> yes, early happy birthday. Well, but thank it, you. It's 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 a it's a real. I think you know you are very fortunate in many ways to be able to at such a young age go. Look, I've made a decent amount of money. It was a nice seven-figure exit. Here's the and thing. You know, what, when I was running that next? company, yeah, yeah I mean, the, yeah. What's what's next? You know, I wanted to get back to my roots. I wanted to get back to, you know, the question after we sold that business was, um, you know, what am I, what, what what am I actually passionate about? You know, I had to think back to my childhood and the thing that has never left me Mm -hmm. is video. I've always had a passion for it. I've always had a passion for holding a camera and being able to tell, how can I effectively tell Mm -hmm. X story, whatever that might be. I've always had a passion for that. And you know, I wanted to get back into YouTube, but didn't know where I wanted to take my channel and eventually fell into doing client work. Right. Yeah, just to get pre- started, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up on that now because that's when I saw your work, you know, with, with uh, the, the folks like Nicole, a uh, top real, realtor in your, in your city where you were referred to her by, I think it was Julia, right? So she was uh, yep. a contact. Yep. And- when I saw the the, the start, now I I've come from you know the 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 nonprofit media world. You know I I grew up in Australia, studied you know actuarial mathematics, very nerdy, typical nerdy Asian immigrant. You know steady job. You know blah blah blah. Get good grades. Boring boring. But uh, my mom's a musician. She's a pianist, and I always had that you know training and and interest in in the arts. You know I just knew I was never good enough to be a concert pianist. But, um, you know, when I saw the opportunity to go from, you know, many years of consulting work, working with Fortune 100 companies, um, you know, you've heard of McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, that, those type of strategy type of consulting work. When I had the opportunity to, to volunteer and do pro bono work for a nonprofit media group in New York, the Big Apple, you know, all the way from my little town in Melbourne, Australia, and said, let's do it. You know, that was 20, roughly 20 years ago. So I, I flew over what be, what was a three-month nonprofit volunteer stint became 10 years. And I fell into not only being an anchor, um, you know, in their English division, it was multi-language, um, but, you know, they eventually produced a director. And I, and I made this film that became an Oscar contender. It was a documentary film, uh, The Courage to Believe, is based on a, a woman's incredible story who I helped obtain asylum you know she was persecuted in a slave labor camp you know making easter bunny nestle bunnies and um you know there's homer simpson slippers and whatnot crazy crazy and almost got killed for her organs right this is in communist dictatorship china where my grandparents originally left 100 years ago so it's very dear to my heart and it went, i went down this rabbit hole you know and we were at that stage when youtube was blowing up and becoming a thing, and and we we grew this nonprofit to 100 million fans on Facebook and YouTube, and and then I kind of got back into you know just my own business. You know, I wanted to start a family, da da da, 
And New York is not, you know, I can't volunteer all my life in New York City. It gets really expensive. And that's, you know, after a few years of my consulting, you know, video marketing, I was working with Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, doing events for them all around the world. Very exciting. Then I met you. I wanted to get back. I wanted to get back into storytelling, not just create, you know, advertisements to sell events. You know, I was very passionate about the personal development space, but I really want to get back to documentary, but I was tied down. I was, I'm living in the country now because of COVID. You know, mm-hmm. left left the city. It was crazy in in New York, um, and uh, I wanted to be. I've got two young boys, three and four, and didn't want to be doing that much travel at this you know early you know critical stage of their development. Then I met you, and it was like life changing because I could collaborate with someone with the same mindset, passion for for storytelling and making an impact. Um, and you could do the travel, but we could still collaborate. I could do the business stuff and help with the directing. Well, you know what I was and- always looking for, Keon, was somebody yeah, to handle perfect. the business side of things. I yeah. love the creative side, but I, I, I don't like anything on the business side. <laughs> and I realized <laughs> and that-, that running that 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 business that we got to eight figures. Yeah, and you know, I wanted to translate that knowledge and understanding into my next thing. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And when I start start producer studios, you know, our goal was to how do we tell stories that really make a difference? And we thought, who are the thought leaders in the world? You know, the Gary V's, the Tony Robbins, the you know, different experts. Um, and how do we tell? I was telling tons of stories, but in the nonprofit realm, you know, organ harvest, encourage to believe, and then then you came along, creating, you know, you're sharing your journey of how you went from stacking shelves to, you know, this huge eight-figure business in a few years. And then I saw, I remember seeing when I was checking you out, right, seeing your work, I remember seeing this video, which I thought, wow, this is so cool. It felt like a Netflix style. If I may, I just want to play one or two minutes so you get an idea of the type of projects you'd be working on, right? If you're watching this, what type of, what do you mean by TED Talk meets Netflix doc? Take a look at this. This is how I keep track of all the shit on all these flips. This is Project House. This is the first thing this one needs. This is a piece of shit. This is one of the biggest projects I'll ever take on. When you're new into real estate, it's difficult. I'll get you drywall. I'm not gonna, I usually don't get the tape, the mud, anything like that. Sometimes when I wake up, I just, I wanna go, 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 because I wanna get all these things done. Okay, but I, th- all those plugs have to be switched out to white ones and all those switches. That's, that's fine. Okay, I don't do anything special, but I do think it's important, and I don't get this time every morning. Um, I do think it's important to try to have an hour to yourself in the morning. All right. I come from parents that are super self-employed. I don't want to say it's never been an option to work for anyone, but it's never been an option. I love money. But all you do it for the money, you do it for the money. No, but money equals freedom. I want the freedom. If you want to join my rat race and see my rat race for an entire week, more power to you. Come sit in the back of my car and literally go in and out of, everywhere I go in and out of, talk to everybody I talk to, pay everybody that I pay, and you can truly see that rat race. So I usually don't look at flips with partners. I don't, I don't entertain it, I don't love it. You gotta figure out what's gonna make you money. I sell real estate. Water right here, you got gas out here for the, you got AC out here. I flip houses. I'm gonna get myself an exterior door. I mesh both of them together almost every day. All right, I'll see you in a few. Uh, you you said you sent it to me, okay. Yeah, I just sent it to you, Chuck. Okay. I'm at the stage where I sell it. I, 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 I was just like, wow, this is so cool, right? I mean, there's so many entrepreneurs out there who wish they had someone behind, you know, need that nitty gritty, authentic behind the scenes, but the, the storytelling, the suspense, the music is cinematic. And just, you know, she literally, after a few of these, was approached by HBO. I won't go into that story, but we we can help someone really just elevate their brand and their vision and and help them just go to that next level. And especially once you, because I have a lot of digital marketing partners as well who can drive traffic. Once, you know, don't just rely on YouTube algorithms to boost you, which could take a long time. But if you understand digital marketing and advertising, you can get your mess- message out there in a huge way. And we, then we started collaborating, right, Chris? Just really quickly after a couple of months, 
you know, I, I, I had this old client um, contact and I presented your story and I said, look, let us help you share your vision. And this is the first collaboration that we did that we just finished doc one. We're on doc two, which has, you know, been, been such a pleasure working with not only yourself, but, you know, Blake and his vision. Let's just show a couple of minutes of this because I want you guys who, if you're watching, you know, you have a chance to shadow Chris, to work intimately with both of us. You'll be, you know, ideally physically in the area where Chris works um, in Michigan, but the chance to help film and learn all the tips and tricks and the, you know, the dozen plus years of experience Chris has had in this, you know, filming space, but also the editing and, you know, really be that right hand man or, or gal working closely with Chris and helping us, you know, scale this exciting business. We not only want to work with the, I imagine working with a, doing a little mini doc for Elon Musk or whoever, right? This, this, is an, this is an example, but we feel that we're creating some cutting edge stuff that, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, you, you don't want the flashy infomercial type of approach to telling this story, but it's something that's really authentic, real, real, especially in the world where everything's as Instagram, this TikTok, that it's all so superficial, right? We were just talking about the problems with, you know, real getting, you know, sharing who you really are you know, as opposed to this some goldfish type of advertisement about who you are sort of thing. So let me just share a little bit of this, uh, this, the second, this, well, this first project that we worked together on. The money that I'm going to make in my productivity and business is tied to my ability to have that clarity. And I can only find it whenever my body's on fire, my mind is clear and my family is in check. That ego, that buffalo, I'm hunting one of the most dynamic, ingrained, habitual animals in the world. You're talking about like 20 years of freaking medical school for them to be able to take their script pad out and write a medication or a prescription for them to diagnose cancer. The whole game here is how can you be the best version of yourself? Because the purpose here is for you to be able to show up 100% on fire for your laboratory. And you need a laboratory that supports that and understands that. Sales reps don't trust lab owners or laboratories because labs tend to tell stories about what their capabilities are. Their testing menu, their technology, their ability to integrate, their marketing, their commitment to the sales reps leadership, their, their sales culture. It's not just about the business side, right? But we get into the, you know, very personal, very vulnerable aspects of their lives, you know, showing some behind the scenes stuff while they're working. What I'm really passionate about is how can I automate a lead process? How can I turn on a spigot of qualified people who have watched <laughs> my marketing videos or watched ads? Sometimes get into really who Blake really is. What is his driving force? What what's his why behind, you know, his business vision? And this stuff, we're literally getting our clients, you know, get in, into the most vulnerable, intimate, you know, backstories. Uh, you know, they're, they're literally crying after we create these these what we, you know kind of masterpieces that we kind of joke about. You know, it's another masterpiece, but that's what we want. We want people to be laughing and crying and motivated and inspired and educated as well, all in just, you know, a Ted talk length, 18 to 20 minute length, right? There's a reason why Ted talks are on average around 18, 20 minutes. You know, seven and eight, I was a banker. I was doing good. I was living the American dream. I was a newly married husband looking forward to having children. My wife is, a, is an amazing mother and I wanted her to be the mother of six kids. That was our plan, let's have six kids. We dated for a year, we were engaged for a year. And then when we got married, we had a, had a, a hemorrhagic cyst that burst inside of her. So she had a, a medical problem. And so we literally within about uh, three weeks of us being married, we were already in the sickness and health vow. And so she had an emergency surgery, and that surgery, 30 days later, found out that there was some staff that was left behind. 
And so uh, she had another emergency surgery, removed an ovary, removed the fallopian tube, and we were stuck after about two months of marriage contemplating fertility treatments. We got lucky on Valentine's Day, we found out that we were pregnant, which it was like, you know, our world moved. And then 23 and a half weeks later, uh, another infection caused her to go into an early labor. And we ended up delivering twin girls and we had Sophia for 12 hours, uh, Charlotte for 72 hours. It was three days in a NICU unit. And, uh, and then everything, at, th at that point, my entire life shifted. That's the, the pivotal point in my life where I can absolutely say that everything that happened before that event, it was different. I wasn't really prepared to, uh, wasn't really prepared to, to deal with the grief. I sedated. Uh, I, I sedated with a couple of different things. I sedated with uh, prescription pain medication. I played college football. I was uh, had broke my neck in college. It's easy for me to get pain medication, and so I did. And because I was depressed, I became dependent, and depression plus dependence equals addiction. And so for about two and a half... So, you know, it gets into... I won't play the whole documentary here, but it gets into his why, you know, why he ended up so passionate about the lab testing space. He may not have lost his two twins had they been properly... His wife probably been tested with what was really wrong with her. And then, you know, we spend two, three days on, on the road, you know, going to the clients, shooting the behind the scenes stuff. We prepared two, three weeks beforehand, you know, figuring out the storyline, the big idea, the frameworks, incorporating, you know, the, what is the call to action to the next point? Or how do we get people, you know, into this uh, story in a way that they're emotionally connected? And this also intellectually interesting. Tell my story. Well, and so we could be doing scenes like this where he's cooking. If you unpack the idea, if my, if my end in mind is I need to have a laboratory that is committed to digital marketing so that way it's best salespeople. And we could be, you know, shooting some behind the scenes where, you know, he's having a meeting with his team. And then we might fly to another city, Houston, where he's dealing with a client. And uh, he has a, a team meeting shot here. Where you've been in business for four or five years, your revenue. He's are narrating. He is that protagonist. He's the TED Talk guy on stage sharing his perspective still. It's not the normal documentary, right? But it's, that's why we kind of, you know, call it the TED Talk meets Netflix style. So it's far more engaging showing real, you know, life footage of him interacting, him flying to Houston on the plane. Chris was literally on the plane with him and, um, you know, and then he's meeting with this client who's an, like a Nobel, you know, prize nominee for his science so the work. Structure here is, I sent a message out. I don't really. And and you know, how do we capture and distill the essence of literally 30, 40 years of his research into a few short segments where people go, "Aha, I get this." Blood difference. His technology is going to literally change and save lives, potentially millions of lives. So for example, this one question we captured and the answer, you know, distilled the whole essence of the technology behind GTC, Genomic Z Testing Corporation. What's the key thing that the test and the report allows the physician to be able to do to, to, to treat the patient? So first of all, we confirm the diagnosis. Second step, we can detect what molecular abnormalities that drive that tumor. That's what drives the therapy. If you start treating patient blindly, that's not acceptable practice today. You know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, still 60% of patients with lung cancer they don't get that testing, and they are getting therapy that is not effective. It's insane. 60% of lung cancer patients are not tested properly. And he's got, you know, these the genomic gene testing and to figure out the exact abnormal. This is like what we call precision medicine. It's all new to us, but we learned, you know, through the whole process of interviewing, consulting, and then eventually shooting this. And then at the end, we're able to share the vision. So we give a lot. See Blake leave. How can we go ahead and put the power back? That's the core academy. That's what we're trying to do. It's a team that we're building. It's a community that we're building. 
It's a coalition that we're building. It's a cooperative that we're fulfilling. We just finished that. So great job, Chris. So we, you know, our, you know, right now we're looking to expand the team, right? Um, we've got a lot of work coming our way. A lot of people have seen this go, I'd, you know, I'd love to have something like that. But we, we only have one of Chris and one of myself. I have a, another team to do other corporate type of work, but we want to expand specifically this, this documentary division, right, Chris? So share, tell us, you know, who, what type of person you're looking for, I guess, Chris? You know, what yeah. type of uh, characteristics, background, skill, all that? I need... A, a DP, call it a DP, yeah. call it an assistant. I need some. That's a challenge. We need to replicate what you replicate. Can- now, now, let me give some context as far as what I do right now. Now, Keon, in this division of labor, you handle the business side of things. I handle the creative side of things with these clients. So when I'm out there with clients, I am shooting everything. I, I'm setting up the shoots. I'm setting up the sound. I'm prepping the client for said shoot. This is what we're going to shoot. And when when I fly back home, I'm the one editing. I'm importing all of this footage. I'm piecing everything together. I'm managing um, some assistant editors that we work with, some color graders and, and such and such. I'm finding music. Understand. I mean, this is a big, a big kind of role. I'm wearing a lot of hats on the creative side. I need a strong-willed, focused individual that is able to come with me on these shoots and help me set up said shoots, bring in the equipment. And somebody that has a deeper understanding of the cinematography of 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 a shoot and uh, uh, camera work and how to get the best juice out of a camera. See, here's what I'm very good at. I am very good at orchestrating and having um, a very high level understanding of how I want something to to look, how mm-hmm. I want the intro to look, how I want the opening scene to look, the blah, 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 X, yep. Y, and Z to look. I need an integrator. I consider myself a visionary. I'm a yep. very good visionary, yep. but I need somebody to help me execute on said visions, yes. right? That's how all of this is going to be able to turn out 10 times better than what we just looked at, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at right now. I need yeah, an so integrator. Like a, I, like a DP, you know, like a, I need a I need a DP. Yeah, an I need editor. an assistant. Yes. I need yeah. uh an assistant editor. I need an everything, a yeah. replicate of me. Yeah. And someone who's young and hungry, you know, we want someone who's kind of like, you know, either in college, still just graduated. If you're brilliant and you've been editing since you were 10. You know, apply, you know, if you're still only in, in, in college days. Ideally, someone who can work full time, obviously. And also, more importantly than anything I mentioned, everything I just mentioned, I can go and hire anybody 10 bucks an hour to help me carry in equipment and yeah, yeah. learn how a camera works and help me sure, sure. with those functions. I need somebody that has a deep passion for storytelling yeah. and telling phenomenal stories. I allocate, I allocate time every day. To, to watching stuff on Netflix or YouTube and being able to, to write notes down. I have a, a notepad over there mm-hmm. and I always apply that to what I'm working on. So the task right now, we're working on a, a, a documentary right now for a client named Blake. Mm-hmm. I'm taking everything that I've been learning this week yep. and parlaying that, translating that into this work right here. Yep. I need somebody that has that passion, that mm-hmm. burning fire inside of them to get 1% better every day and apply that to what they're doing every day. I don't want somebody that's stagnant. I don't want somebody that's a, a cog in the system or somebody that that is okay with a base level of uh, yeah. understanding as far as story goes, right? So that's the opportunity to really be mentored by Chris and myself. I mean, I, we both get on the client calls at the moment in the pre-production. And I guess with my 20 odd, you know, 30 years uh, coming to uh, in consulting and film and production and directing and being a on camera talent myself. I'm very involved with the consulting process that basically getting to know the client, understand the business and understand how to draw out the storylines from each of the main protagonists. Right. And we're both on this goal and we, you get to be part of this. We want you to be part and be a, you know, learn how we are consulting with clients so that when we go in, we're not just, okay, here's a bunch of 
questions we're going to interview you on. You know, it's very dynamic, but at the same time, structured in a way that doesn't feel like, you know, we've planned ahead, but it's just natural storytelling. But the key highlighted points, we need to, you know, talk, you know, think about social proof and uh, what is it, you know, how, how do we make this emotionally compelling? How do we grab how attention? We tell the best story possible. Visually, you know, both in a narration, Visually. like how do we write a TED talk for a client in a way that doesn't feel like a written TED talk, but then how do we bring it to life like a Netflix documentary, mm-hmm. right? So uh, you'll notice it's, it's very minimal graphic, you know, special effects. We're, we're, we're very, you know, no, we don't need that. We, this is real life and it's just done in a way that all that behind the scenes, close-ups and different angles that, you know, and, and making it fun when he's showing people who are in the element doing their thing, whether it's cooking or you know, whatever it may be, right? So we capture all that and tell really that those deep, vulnerable stories that, uh, that we get the client comfortable in doing. And then you'll be on the set with Chris, setting up it'll mentor you know ideally obviously you got to feel like you're you want to be a filmmaker right that's you need to be able to contribute ideas yeah you need to be able to contribute to the project that's at hand and give great suggestions that we can execute on and and feel like hey here's the framework here the sound bites go off and then edit this in a way that you know is the good first draft that chris feedback on you need to be able to show up in power every day right you need to be able to own your space you need to have such a deep understanding. You're not, I, you're not, I'm not your boss. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can think of it like that, but I want you to think of this like a partnership, right? Yeah. That's yeah. how you're going to most effectively be able to contribute yeah. to the project. But we realize we can only impact, you know, these projects are like very boutique. You know, we spend, you know, only six to eight weeks on, on these projects to get you know, 20 minutes done. Right, this is not a, a six to twelve month full length documentary. Quite often, the client will say, "I want three or four of these and have a series." Fine, all right, that's going to be spread out over time. But we realize that you know to to have the most impact, we need to build a team up so we can have train others who can go off and do this. You know, and we'll bring the client work and we'll mentor you and we'll build a whole team up to be able to scale a little bit. Right? This is always going to be relatively boutique. Um, so we understand there's going to be a period of time to be mentored properly in all these aspects, especially if you're only still relatively young, you know, and you might not have that many experience. So to some degree, someone who's got 10, 15 years experience of set in their way. So we want to find someone who's young, fresh and hungry and sees the opportunity to work with, you know, folks, gray hair folks like me, who's done a lot of the consulting and, and, and uh, business and also production in, 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 my, in my space as well. And someone like Chris, you know, literally uh, in the same city, ideally, right? We want someone to be, you know, working with you uh, in Michigan. So um, obviously, if you somehow come across this and you feel like you, you can, you can uh, uh, fly to different client shoots and you can still work from home, apply still, right? But, you know, obviously, you know, having that chance to, or if you're willing to move to Michigan, hey, even better, right? But if you're already in Michigan, then you, you'll you have a chance to work very closely with Chris, obviously, on a day-to-day basis. Second, down the, you know, down the track in maybe six to 12 months, we also want to be able to teach other filmmakers how to get these, you know, really exciting gigs that, are, you know, we can be paid very handsomely, especially if the right type of client. We can impact literally seven, eight figures to their bottom line, you know, by implementing these strategies, we have a whole digital marketing division, as mentioned, we can build websites and funnels and run traffic to, uh, you know, to generate leads and so on and so forth. So this is a very integrated approach. We're not just, a, you know, a documentary filmmaker for businesses. You know, we are, because we are full service, literally with Blake, we've been building website, we rebuilt his whole brand, his whole website, building funnels for him and his clients, All right? These are six figure projects. And, um, you know, it's great. That way, you know, you're going to learn so much about the business side of things, not just the artistry. A lot of great filmmakers out there, but unfortunately, a lot of them are broke, right? They just don't know how to negotiate, don't know how to charge what they're worth, and they don't understand the business side. We'll mentor you all on this. And eventually, we're going to be training others and create a coaching program to help other filmmakers around the world learn what we're doing so they can do these mini documentaries in their cities working with you know visionary entrepreneurs in all different industries right so that's kind of our you know our vision longer term so 
on that note, you know, click below somewhere and, and apply. And we can't wait to get your you know, full resume, obviously your portfolio links to your documentaries you've made and any YouTube channels you've built and, and films that have won awards or whatever, right? So uh, write a cover letter, email us, you know, this is um, a, a really great opportunity, I, I feel, to you know, really master this craft of storytelling in, 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 in the business context, you know, down the track, you know, with these skills, you can do whatever passion project and, and, and fund it properly, you know. Um, so that, that's, that's I guess, the opportunity, Chris. Any, any final words? Um, no, I'm looking forward. Yeah? I'm looking forward yeah. To, to finding that, that individual. That rock star, absolutely. That rock star, better word. Passion. Absolutely. Passion. Well, you, Chris. I need somebody to... that lives and breathes. Oh, no. That, yeah. You know, we, we've, um, uh, I've, I've, uh, I, I've definitely, you know, admire that. I, I never thought I'd be a filmmaker in, in my little way. I, you know, I never, you know, it's just, it was just too far away. But gradually over the years, I realized, hey, this is something that is, is such a, such a joy to, to create this type of artwork, you know, really is. It's a collaborative team effort. Uh, absolutely. Right? You get to be a filmmaker in your own, we're all filmmakers in our own way, right? That's right. That's right. And um, so on that note, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So just apply below, uh, click on the links or wherever, and there's an application form, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right. On that note, take care. Chris, thank you much. And right. thank uh, you, we'll thank you. We'll look forward to interviewing you guys on a Zoom call soon. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.